Good day, mighty seniors. This is your chief word worker, Ms. Tan, reporting for duty. Today, we will talk about the different research designs for quantitative studies. So this is lesson 5, and I entitled it Modes of Inquiry in Quantitative Research. For this particular discussion, I will be using Kumar in 2011. He will be the chief source of information for our discussion today. So, according to Kumar in 2011, there are three different categories by which quantitative research designs are divided. So, the first category is number of contacts with the study population. The second one is research designs for re reference period of the study. And lastly, nature of investigation. So, what are these three? So, here we go with the first category, number of contacts with the study population. What, do, uh, what does this mean? So, for the study designs under this category, we have cross-sectional, before and after, and longitudinal. So, what do we mean by the number of contacts with the study population? For cross-sectional studies, you only contact your respondents once. For before and after, you contact your respondents twice. And lastly, for longitudinal, you contact them thrice or more. Let us have an in-depth discussion per study design. Cross-sectional studies, just like what I've mentioned earlier, you only meet your respondents once. So it is also called a one-shot or status study. So whatever you can gather at the moment, that's the only data that you will gather. So, for cross-sectional studies, it's finding out the prevalence of a phenomenon, situation, problem, attitude, or issue by taking a cross-section of the population. When we talk about cross-section of the population, the word cross-section here, in social science, it's the representative group. So, in quantitative research, we have already learned that the representative group is... 75% of the total population, or you can call that the sample. Another one is that cross-sectional, according to Babi in 1989, is designed to study some phenomenon by taking a cross-section of it at one time. So again, it's just for one time, one meeting for uh, with the participants. So how do you do a cross-sectional study? It's very much simple. So the first one is you decide what you want to find out about. Um, that is somehow synonymous to selecting a topic and probably a title. The second one is to identify the study population. That is the reason why you have to identify your target respondent here. Number three, select a sample if you need to. If you want to involve the whole population, then why not? For the sample, again, this should be 75%. Next one, and the last, is contact your respondents and gather the required information. So in quantitative research, this could just be a simple survey. So you just um, get their answers uh, once and then you're done. However, cross-sectional studies um, could be lacking in the measurement of the change in situation, attitude, phenomenon, or issue. So since you will be involving just one set of participants and at a certain period of time, only one period in time, so it cannot measure the change. So what if they um, change their perception next week or probably next month? So that is somehow lacking. That is why the second one is before and after or the uh, more popular term for this is pretest and post-test. I think you're very much familiar with this one. So before and after studies uh, measure the impact or effectiveness of a program. So you will see here it measures the impact or effectiveness of a program. Your research studies uh, are somehow inclined to this one, the effectiveness of this and that. So it could be before and after. And then it points on the same population or probably the same sample to find about 
the change in the phenomenon or variables between two points in time. So in cross-sectional studies, um, you only involve the, the respondents one point in time. However, for before and after, you have to wait um, until such time that there is a perceived change in their perception, for example. So you will need two points in time. However, it requires the same population because you need to see the difference, okay? We are talking about the difference here. So the change is measured by comparing the difference in the phenomenon or variables before and after the intervention. So take note of the word intervention here. If there is an intervention which is the supposed um, independent variable, then that is probably a before and after study. So, before and after studies are actually um, two sets of cross-sectional data. So, it comprises of two cross-sectional data sets. So, the second one being undertaken after a certain period. So, the difference between the two sets of data collection points with respect to the dependent variable is considered to be the impact of the program. So, somehow, this is um, uh, s uh, sufficient. However, before and after studies could be less helpful in studying the pattern of change. So if cross-sectional study is lacking in terms of finding out the difference between uh, the, the changes in the perception over uh, two periods in time, before and after is less helpful in determining whether there is a pattern in the change. Hence, the third study design under number of contacts we have longitudinal studies which determine the pattern of change in relation to time so this could go on for not less than six months okay so you can meet your respondents at least three times at different points in time Okay, so for longitudinal studies, the population is visited a number of times at regular intervals over a long period. Again, just like what I've uh, mentioned earlier, so there must be a long period of time, a minimum of six months, okay? And then there must be a regular interval be, uh, among the, the time periods, okay? So you could see and observe the patterns or the changes of uh, their responses. So longitudinal study design is actually a series of repetitive cross-sectional studies. So you see the point of the number of contacts here. Now, for longitudinal studies, although the data collected is from the same study population, it may or may not be from the same respondents. How is this so? For longitudinal studies, you are just after the pattern of change. Okay, so for example, you will be um, surveying a number of grade 12 students, say their preference in. Uh, college study programs now if you will be involving the same set of students how can they let's say graduate okay these students graduate uh, eventually so you have to involve another set of the same population meaning grade 12 but the sample may not be the same so that is longitudinal study design. So again, we have the three research designs under the number of contacts, cross-sectional, before and after, and longitudinal studies. So see you again in the second part of this series.